Okay. Hello. I want to show you some examples about the use of SciSnap. The libraries are now integrated into Snap, and so it's easier to use them. First, I want to show you how to start SciSnap, and then I show some examples. Let's go. Now I have opened the actual developer version of Snap, and I use the file menu, and here libraries, and here is SciSnap. I try to import all the blocks that take some time. No. Now the blocks are opened, and after a while, I find here the new palettes of SciSnap. And I use the first yeah. one, the SciSnap Globals, and start SciSnap. That's all for the first. If you want to use a manual, you'll find it here in English and in German. And uh, we will use some blocks from the different libraries in the next examples. Now, the first example, I want to plot some data uh, and the regression line for this data on a plot pad. So I use the plot pad library and configure the actual sprite as a plot pad. And I get an empty rectangle here. And now I need data. The configuration means I have some new variables, my data and my properties, and I set my data to random data that I can get from the data tools, and I use random points, random points near straight. Scattering around the data, I do this. Well, 10 points, let's use 50 again. And I try to plot this points with add data plot of numeric data of my data to this sprite. And I can see the ranges are not the best. I use uh, points between minus 5 and 5, and the predefined properties are from minus 10 to 10, so I change this from minus 5 to 5 and try it again. And that's better now, so I can combine these blocks. I configure the sprite, find the data, set the ranges, and add a data plot. And at last, I add the scales. Where are the And if I want to have a beautiful um, plot, I can set labels and uh, so on and use different colors. I do this now and get uh, here and nah. Now I have a diagram title and a text on the scales. <clears throat> I want to get the regression line parameters. That's anywhere here. Down regression line parameters of my data. My data here. And I get the regression line parameters and I can add a data plot of this regression line to this sprite. I have it, and it would be better to use different colors and widths of the line. That's done, for example, in here, in example here in the block uh, palette. And here I have changed the colors and so I get a nice title. Now we have a little example with the SQL library. First we configure SQL and connect to the database server. The success we can see with the green light here. Then we have a look what databases we found. We choose one of them. And after that, we uh, can process all the SQL 
uh, queries you want. First, some uh, English courses in the database that are these, or the students with good results in English courses. Now we have an example from the math library. We use a fast uh, Fourier transformation, and because it's a bit tricky, we need help from a young, gifted mathematician uh, called Gundolf, and uh, he will show uh, us how we can work. At first, we need some data. We produce some training data. These are simple to sign functions and added three. And uh, this data we can show, it's not very interesting, but we can it transform with a fast Fourier transformation and show the frequency spectrum of this data. And we have the three and the two other uh, frequencies. And we can do the same with every type of data, for instance, with the cat sound from SNAP. Now we will use this to compress uh, an image. First we switch to this image, we have it here, and the first attempt is we get the pixels from this image and get the three color channels and sampled is uh, into complex fast Fourier transformated data. Now we have it here for the red channel. This is a complex number and we have the two values. We uh, normalize it a bit and transform it and cut the frequencies higher than 10% of the data. We reduce it to 10%, the data volume. Uh, I need here 0 0.1 then. It needs some time. And after a while, we have the result, a compressed image. We try the same with another factor. We compress it to 1%. And you can experiment what frequencies uh, uh, produce the main structures, what uh, uh, frequencies produce the details, what can you cut, can you uh, cut every second frequency or whatever you want. Now I have an example for the image pad. Image pads are for uh, image uh, manipulation. And again, we need help from Gundorf because we uh, use a fine transformation of an image. Uh, first, I configure Gundorf in this case to an image pad and load an image. It's an image of a church. And uh, I import the data from this image to my data of the image pad and define three points, the source points, which are mapped to the target points, three other points. This happens here. And I create a new sprite, a clone of the other sprite. We have it now here. And then I apply the affine transformation of the present custom to uh, uh, the new sprite. And now I have here two different sprites with transformed one to the other. Image pads also can be used as grid automatons. And uh, for this purpose, I have to add a grid to the uh, image pad and uh, can use it. We will do this, uh, and because the example is from physics. I use um, Alberto to help us. We configure Alberto as an image pad and um, add an image pad grid. That's now done. Fill the cells with special 
values with numbers and then I show the grid and I have a distribution of here three values from four, five, six, seven, four, four values, yes. And uh, now I apply a special grid operation. The cells change their values depending on the cells around and here I use a Moore neighborhood and as a torus world and apply again and again this operation and you can see the we get a structure that uh, is uh, similar to the ferromagnetism uh, in uh, crystal and when i add some noise that means i um, uh, get a higher temperature then i see depending on the temperature the structure is nearly destroyed and if i lower the temperature a bit to 30 percent then the structures are reconstructed again uh, some of the operations on grids are to get the neighborhood on, uh, of cells i can um, swap cells and combine grids and one application uh, is uh, Wolfram Automaton number 30 which described in his famous book A New Kind of Science. I, this is the automat you will find there. Now we will have some examples about machine learning. The first one is the use of a decision tree ID3 procedure. This uh, procedure uses the entropy of data uh, to construct the tree. What we have is a table of birds and we want to know whether a new bird is maybe a singing bird or not. Such a table is a condensed knowledge of experts and uh, we take a copy of this table and delete the first row and the first column. Oh no, here. And construct a decision tree for these data. data. And now we uh, observe a new bird and want to know is may this be a singing bird or not. And so we classify this bird with help of the decision tree. And uh, as you see, um, it, it's probably not a singing bird, maybe it's an eagle. Now we perform an outlier detection with DB scan, the method is, and we configure the stage as image pad this time and construct two groups of data and 20 points anywhere on the screen that are the outliers that I'm doing now and I show this data. I have the first group, second group and now some outliers and I want to detect the outliers in uh, this data set. That I can be done if I apply the dbscan uh, DB clustering for this data. And what I get is uh, our data assigned to special group, group one here, group two, and then at last data that are not assigned to a group. And I filter these data with a group number smaller than zero out and show this in red. And this, uh, these are the outliers of this data set. Now we have the last example. It's an example also from machine learning, uh, the cool learning process. It's an unsupervised learning. And we have a little robot. Uh, he lives in a garden. This is a garden and he knows uh, nothing about the garden. The only thing 
that is sure that here is a power station and the Robby, the robot, has to contact the power station uh, by time. And in the garden we have some flowers here and uh, the owners of the garden become very angry if, Robert, uh, if the robot uh, cuts the uh, flowers. And now the robot sh should move in the garden and construct a Q function that is uh, the information he got about the garden. And at the beginning he knows nothing. The learning process is uh, very long, and so I shorted a bit. Uh, Robbie uh, does, uh, didn't doesn't uh, move randomly in the garden, but he runs here in uh, systematical through the garden. Uh, we do this, and Robbie now begins to start here, and uh, Robbie is an optimist. He doesn't know much about the gardener, but he hopes the neighbors of the, extra, uh, of the actual position are smarter than he. And the, he also takes the best uh, value of, the na of his neighbors, uh, neighbor position. And uh, so if there are good values, they are spreading uh, uh, over the Q function, and this process takes time. What we can see, uh, the information here is color coded. Green means that it's a good idea to uh, use this direction to go uh, to cells with a higher value, green value. Red is forbidden. And after a while, I think he will uh, get contact here to the neighborhood of the flowers. And he says, oh, no, I shouldn't go there. After some cycles, the Q function shows what Robbie has learned. He knows if he has to contact the power station, it's a good idea to follow the increasing green values in, the, in any direction. And he knows that it is not good idea, a good idea to move in this region, and it is forbidden to leave the garden. And we can test his behavior if uh, we bring the robot to any position in the garden and let him run. And I start at the position 2.8. Oh, um, we have time for one or two questions. I'll go ahead and stop sharing. If there are any questions, please go ahead. So is Orpheus implemented in JavaScript and does it use any kind of acceleration or? Yes, uh, uh, a part is uh, implemented in JavaScript. And uh, if you start size that the uh, um, code is loaded from, from uh, Snap Server. And uh, I continuously uh, transform this to, to higher order functions because they are fast enough. And I only use uh, JavaScript if it's necessary. And uh, you have um, a manual in English also, in my English, uh, it's about 150 pages and you, you have a lot of examples there. I made no videos. But I want uh, to, to uh, tell another aspect. Um, I use this uh, libraries for a while in my uh, lectures and for non-computer science scientists, and they are from all faculties. And there are stable about 80% um, female students in this lecture. And I think uh, 
I need a set of blocks that allows to construct uh, sensible applications for beginners, and that's possible. That's what's the reason to build Seismap. Thank you, Edgar, for that.